We're getting hit by some fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth strike zone, and no sooner than we begin to calm down from that than we get hit again. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Although not super busy this week, space weather is definitely keeping things interesting. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see a big finger-like coronal hole. That has been rotating in through the Earth strike zone. It's been sending us some fast solar wind over the past couple days. That hasn't been super fast, but it has managed to bring aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. As a matter of fact, we've seen aurora in Scotland and the UK and clear down as, as far south as North Dakota in the United States. But it's only been a little bit fleeting, and it's a sadly beginning already to die off. But there is more because we look behind it and we have yet another uh, coronal hole. It's a very small one, but it's also going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. So it will likely give us another boost of fast solar wind and give us another chance for aurora, especially at high latitudes. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see it's continuing to drop over this past week, and therefore by proxy, so the solar flux is also beginning to drop. You can see we popped a few B-class flares back on the 29th. This was from region 2801 that did fire off a couple little mini, like mini, mini solar storms. They're more like blobs that we call them, and they weren't really Earth-directed, so really the storming that we've been getting recently is far more due to that fast solar wind hitting Earth and anything that Region 2801 has been sending us. But sadly, even that uh, activity has kind of died down, and you can see that X reflux continuing to drop and continuing to drop. That's because these regions are now rotating to the sun's far side, and we're going to lose them in the next few days. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I'm so sorry to say it, but we are barely hanging on to marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, and it's easily going to continue like that over the next few days possibly a week or more before we see a reprieve. But hey, at least you GPS users, you'll love this because this means that day side reception for GPS should look pretty good. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past week, we've been pretty much hovering around quiet conditions. In fact, it's been hovering between quiet conditions and really quiet conditions. But as about the first, we started to kind of ramp up a little bit in activity. And as of the second, wham, look at that. We got hit by that fast solar wind and it bumped us up to active conditions almost right away. And we stayed at active conditions easily for about half a day before we kind of settled back down a little bit. This brought some gorgeous aurora, especially at high latitudes. We had some gorgeous gorgeous storm colors, and it even brought aurora down to mid-latitudes for a short while. Since then, we've kind of been settling down just a little bit, but hey, right as now we've actually bumped back up to active conditions, and this will kind of slowly kind of go up and down, up and down over the next few days, well, maybe probably the next day or so, settle down just a little bit, and then we'll get the effects of that second coronal hole rotating into the Earth strike zone, and we'll likely bump back up to active conditions again, at least for a short while. So your aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, stay tuned because you're going to get an, a second show of this, like an encore, I guess. I don't know if that's what you call it. But amateur radio operators, well, you're going to have to be dealing with a bit of trouble on Earth's night side. But you know what? These types of storms, because they're kind of weak like this, they actually help boost propagation on Earth's day side. So maybe the fact we don't have any sunspots, uh, you know, coming into view here in the next few days is going to be okay because, you know, we've got a solar storm that kind of helps us out a little bit. So just just hang in there. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 11th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora over the next few days, now's not a bad time to catch it, but you might have to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that fast solar wind stream that's hitting Earth, and it's brought some aurora clear down to mid-latitudes over the past couple days, but things are beginning to wane. At high latitudes, NOAA's expecting unsettled conditions, but we still have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, and that's going to wane just a little bit over the next couple days, but then remember, we get that second coronal hole with some more fast wind, so we could be back up to active conditions 
at mid or at high latitudes uh, as we enter the weekend. Now, at mid latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions right now, but we only have about a 20% chance of active conditions anymore. And again, that is going to wane easily over the next couple days, but we also have a slight chance of jumping back up to active conditions, only about a 15% chance, but that will be in the weekend. And that's going to be from that fast solar wind from that second coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. And that should give aurora pop uh, uh, photographers a, a possibility for aurora in through the weekend just a skosh so just be careful it may not be as exciting as you want especially if you're at mid latitudes and only if you're dedicated should you chase switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares we do only have one region on the earth facing disk right now and it's not flare active so we have no risk for radio blackouts and this should make you gps users on earth's day side very happy gps reception should be pretty good right now on Earth's day side. Now, sadly, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, where things aren't looking so great for you right now, we do have one region, this is region 20, 801 that's on the earth facing disk but this region is beginning to rotate to the sun's far side as we speak so we only have about another day of it before it completely disappears behind the sun's west limb luckily though we do have solar flux sitting at about the mid 70s right now it will likely die down just a little bit to probably the low 70s so it looks like we'll hang on to marginal radio propagation on earth's day side which might actually be a little bit enhanced on the earth's day side because of the solar storms that we're having right now that are pretty weak. Earth's night side is another story, however. So just hang in there. Even though we don't have any more um, regions that we expect to see rotating into view easily over the next three to five days, maybe longer, this may be kind of the way things stay for a while. So just hang in there and we'll get through it. Now, meanwhile, also because we are still trying to climb out of solar minimum, the uh, uh, cosmic ray flux will be a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you're free Frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, your cosmic ray dose, your radiation dose, will be a bit larger than you want it to be. It's at the moderate range right now. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So while the space weather this week isn't the most exciting, well, it's also not the most boring either. We have some fast solar wind that's hitting Earth now from a coronal hole that's rotated in through the Earth's strike zone. It's managed to bring aurora down to mid latitudes, and it could continue to do that over the next 24 hours or so before things begin to wane. And then we have yet another burst of fast solar wind from another small coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. So your aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, you should really enjoy this time you should be able to get some beautiful shots and for you aurora photographers at mid latitudes well hang in there and you could possibly get another chance for aurora in through this weekend but just know that it's going to be a bit sporadic and it won't last all that long so just be diligent now also amateur radio operators and emergency responders well we have region 2801 that's on the earth facing disk right now it is a northern hemisphere sunspot and that is helping boost that solar flux up into the mid 70s for the moment but sadly it's rotating to the sun's far side here over the next day or so and that means solar flux will be continue to drop but i don't think we're going to get below the 70s for uh, solar flux which means we're going to hang on to marginal radio propagation on earth's day side so enjoy that and just know that on earth's night side this week is going to be a little bit dicey because because of the solar storms that are kind of coming in waves a little bit for you. So just hang in there and hopefully uh, we'll get a reprieve from this here pretty soon. Now also you GPS users, well, you know, dayside uh, reception should actually be pretty good for you right now because the solar flux is low and we don't have any flare activity right now. The night side might be a little bit more dicey, of course, because we have the solar storms going. And obviously if you're anywhere near the dawn dusk aurora or dawn dusk terminators or anywhere near aurora, Aurora, you're probably going to have some reception problems, so just keep that in mind. But things should settle down as we begin to move into the next week. Now, one last note is that if any of you happen to be using SOHO data, any of the instruments like LASCO, the coronagraphs, just know the team is having trouble right now because there's been a lot of weather issues and maintenance issues and other issues that have come up. And sadly, yes, some of the SOHO data has been lost. So the team has reached out to me to ask me to tell you that please 
Go easy on them. They're supporting the Parker Solar Probe Project right now, and trust me, any data that gets lost just breaks their hearts, as it does mine and likely yours as well. So go easy on them. None of us want to lose data, but sometimes it happens. So, I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.